How serious well, is this for Israel if they are found to be responsible? I think in any case, in any place in the world, when aid workers are killed, it, it is very serious. The Israelis really need to conduct an investigation to find out how this was allowed to happen and certainly needs to take responsibility for it. I understand that this very important charitable organization has ceased its activities in Gaza, which is essential for helping to feed the people in Gaza who are lacking food and lacking ability to cook and to uh, get the nutrition that they need in order to continue living. So it's a very serious incident. It certainly is. Just in terms of uh, the latest developments there, Israel's military has pulled out of Al-Shifa hospital after a two-week raid. Uh, most of that medical complex is now in ruins. The IDF says, and this is the justification, it's killed 200 terrorists and detained 900 more. And it said it raided that hospital because it was harboring uh, Hamas and also Palestinian is Islamic Jihad there as well. Of course, the rebuttal from Hamas is quite significant. What does this do? You're a hostage negotiator. What does this do? to those, those poor souls who are still being held hostage as the international community ramps up the rhetoric and, indeed, its actions on Israel? Right. Well, these negotiations that are going on between Israel, Israel and Hamas uh, through third-party mediators, Qatar and Egypt, are already very difficult. We have two parties to a negotiation that are essentially committed to killing each other. It's a very strange negotiation in terms of that. And the gaps are still quite wide. While 134 hostages remain in Gaza, it's believed that about half of them are no longer alive. And every day that they remain in Gaza, there's a risk to their lives. Hamas wants an end to the war. Israel is not willing to grant an end to the war with leaving Hamas in place and control of Gaza. So we're kind of at a deadlock, but there are negotiations that are ongoing. And as long as the parties are trying to reach an agreement, we should remain hopeful. There needs to be additional pressure on both sides to come to an agreement because this war really does need to end. The hostages need to be freed. People need allowed to be allowed to get back to their homes, even if they're destroyed. And uh, we need a new political plan that's going to put us on the path toward a two-state solution. And here I'll remind your listeners once again that it's time for the United Kingdom to recognize the state of Palestine. This is one of the ways to defeat Hamas without shooting a single gun, because this is not in the interest of Hamas. We need to defeat Hamas politically, not only militarily. Very interesting point there. Um, well, for the first time over the weekend, families of hostages have called for the resignation of Netanyahu. Uh, are you in contact with any of the families at all, obviously in your role as a hostage negotiator? And what is the feeling amongst them? Because it's, it's quite significant, isn't it, for them to turn in this way? It is very significant, but the families are representative of the political spectrum of the state of Israel. And there are families that are right wing and families that are left wing and families that support Netanyahu and families that are against him. So it's quite a, unusual for a group of families, not all the families, to come out and call for new elections for removing Netanyahu from power. Um, I personally believe, and I told this to representatives of the families from the very beginning, that at the end of the day, they're going to face an Israeli government. And if they want to get their loved ones back, they're going to need to put pressure on the Israeli government. This is where an agreement can be reached or not be reached. They have no influence on Hamas, but they can have influence over the Israeli public and the Israeli politicians, and that's where pressure needs to be applied today from them. If any one of those politicians had a child or a spouse or a brother a hostage in Gaza, I'm sure that they would do everything possible to bring them back. Well, of course, the UN uh, Security Council passed that resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. But Netanyahu is doubling down here. He has authorised military plans. He says he's authorised military plans to invade Rafah. There are 1.5, 1.8 million people stuck in a tiny piece of land there in Gaza. And these people's lives are in great danger. Right. Well, Netanyahu has said repeatedly that he's approved plans for attacking Rafa, and yet the attack hasn't yet begun. It seems that it might be also part of the tactic being used by Israel in these negotiations with Hamas to put pressure on Hamas to come to an agreement. The United States is definitely against Israel attacking Rafa without a plan to evacuate the citizens there. To evacuate 1.5 million citizens will take a considerable amount of time. So I don't believe that an attack, a full ground operation is impending at any time in the foreseeable future.